Many people ask Catholics, why do you confess your sins to a priest? Why don't you just go straight to God? After all, the priest himself is a sinner. So why do you go to another sinner instead of God, who is the one who can forgive all sins? So in this video, we're going to be answering the question, why Catholics go to confession to a priest? Why can't we ask forgiveness for our sins at the top of a mountain? Why can't we ask for forgiveness of our sins on the beach? Why can't we ask for sins anywhere to be forgiven because God is everywhere. So why do we go to confession to a priest? In this video, that is the question that we're going to be answering. We're going to be showing why Jesus himself started it and why it is biblical. In this video, we're answering the question, why Catholics confess their sins to a priest? And if you haven't been here before, we are Catholic Truth, an organization dedicated to explaining and proclaiming the one truth of Jesus Christ and the Catholic faith, and really helping Catholics to know, love, and live their faith with passion and to set them on fire. So, why do Catholics confess their sins to a priest? The answer is easy, because that's the way that Jesus set it up. Jesus was the first one to make the sacrament of confession. He is the one who gave the apostles, men, the power to forgive sins. In fact, this is the way that God has always worked throughout history. Of course, we as Catholics, we know that the Bible says that only God can forgive sins, and we believe that. That is 100% truth. Only God forgives sins. But the biblical model and the biblical way it's been for, well, ever, is that God forgives our sins, but through a priest. Look at Leviticus chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It says that God, if you confess your sins to him, he will forgive you, but through the priest. Likewise, if you get into the New Testament and you look at John 20, 21 through 23, it shows that Jesus is going to forgive our sins through the priest. He actually gives men, the apostles, the first bishops and priests of the church, the power and authority to forgive sins in his name. Listen to what it says. Jesus said, quote, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they will be retained." Unquote. In this verse, Jesus is clearly giving the apostles the power to forgive sins. Now let's look at this verse. What is the first thing Jesus says after he says, peace be with you? He says, as the Father has sent me, so I am going to send you. Now let's ask the question, why did God the Father send Jesus his Son into the world? The answer is to forgive sins, to bring us back to God, and to reconcile us back to God. So now Jesus is sending the apostles to do the exact same thing, to forgive sins and to reconcile people back to God, to bring people to him. That's the mission of what Jesus had from the Father, and that is the mission that Jesus is giving to the apostles. So it's very interesting that Jesus says that they are going to have the same mission that he did. And then the very next verse, it says that Jesus breathed on them. It's only the second time in the whole Bible that God breathed on somebody. The first time was in the Garden of Eden when God breathed life into Adam and Eve. Now God is breathing his divine life, his authority into the apostles so that they can have the authority to forgive sins in Jesus' name. That's why the very next verse says, if you forgive the sins of men, they will be forgiven. And if you don't, they won't. Or if you retain them, in other words, you don't forgive them, they will be retained. So Jesus is clearly giving the apostles the authority to forgive sins. Now notice what Jesus does not say. Jesus does not say, oh, just confess your sins straight to God. He does not say, oh, just tell people to come straight to me. He does not say, oh, just tell people to go straight to the Father because only God can forgive sins. Of course only God can forgive sins, but Jesus never said any of that. He said, if you men forgive sins, they will be forgiven, and if you don't, they won't. So how are the apostles supposed to know which sins to forgive and which sins to retain 
if we don't tell them. I mean, the apostles have a lot of gifts of the Holy Spirit, but they're not mind readers. We have to confess our sins to one another. And in fact, that's what James 5.14 says. It says, confess your sins to one another, but only the apostles and their successors receive the power to forgive sins. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21 says. It says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting them the message of reconciliation. So that's what we just said. We said that God was reconciling the world through Christ. And Christ gave that same mission to the apostles. And even St. Paul there in 2 Corinthians says that Christ was reconciling the world through him, through the ministry of reconciliation. It's a ministry. It's the forgiveness of sins. And this is the way it's been for 2,000 years. Now, some people will say the confessional box came in at a much later date, and that's true. But that doesn't matter that the box came in later. It's just a way that Catholics have made it private so their sins aren't heard by all in front of everybody. But there are five or six reasons why Jesus set up the sacrament of confession. There are really good practical reasons why Jesus set up the sacrament of confession. And the first one is humility. What was the first sin of the devil? Pride. What was the first sin of Adam and Eve? Pride. They tried to be God without God. And so all sins have some sort of pride in them. And the opposite of pride is humility. Once you step on the path to humility, you're already walking the path back to God. And in fact, the devil hates humility. And that's why we go to another man. That's one of the reasons Jesus set it up is because it's really hard. It's humbling. It's difficult. We have to humble ourselves and say we did something wrong. It's easy to confess it to God, but to confess it to somebody else is difficult and we have to humble ourselves. So we're already putting ourselves back in the right mindset with God and confessing our sins to God through the priest in a humble state. God is the one who forgives our sins, so God is the one we confess to, but the priest is the channel, but the priest is the channel by which that forgiveness comes about. Just like in Leviticus 5, God said he forgave the sins through the priest, and so he still forgives sins through the priest. The second reason is because we're physical beings. We're not just soul. We are body and soul. So we need to see, we need to hear, we need to touch, we need to experience, we need to encounter God in a real way. Now that can be done in a spiritual way, but God oftentimes uses physical means to communicate spiritual realities and his grace. So for example, we, re we are born again through baptism, but God uses water, physical water, to bring about that spiritual regeneration. And we have a video on that right there if you're interested. And he uses bread and wine, physical means to communicate spiritual realities, to communicate to us his graces and his presence. And so he's done that many times throughout history, and it's no different in confession. It's a physical. We get to experience. We get to hear the priest say the words, your sins are forgiven. When we confess our sins at home, sure, we can believe it, but once we hear those words, we know for a 100% fact that we are forgiven for our sins if we are truly sorry for them. And this is another great reason why Jesus set up the church and why Jesus set up the sacrament of confession is because the priest can help us to know that we're forgiven. He can give us advice. He can give us counsel. If he hears a particular sin that we're, we have, he could say, hey, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about overcoming it this way? Hey, this has helped me. This has helped many people in the past. This is how the great saints overcame it. And he can actually give you spiritual advice. I went to a hole-in-the-wall Pentecostal church once, and this pastor, he did a lot of mean, bad things to his sister. And he was telling us this story. And his sister was saying, hey, listen, you really hurt me. And I would like to talk about this. You really hurt me deeply when you did that. Can we reconcile this between us? And he said, no, don't talk to me about it. I'm forgiven. God forgave me. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Stop bugging me. 
And he actually said this in church, and his sister, he left her hurt. Now, sometimes we don't want to be convicted of our sins. It's much easier to pretend we didn't hurt anyone, just to throw it under the blood and let it be forgiven, and it is, but we've still hurt other people, and that's a problem that needs to be dealt with. So sometimes we don't want our sins called out, and we don't want to be told what we need to do. But in confession, a priest might say, hey, go talk to your sister and reconcile that between you and her. God's already forgiven you, but you need to make it up to her. See, sin doesn't just hurt God. It hurts us and it hurts other people. And we need to make up for that too. And that's the difference between Protestants and Catholics. We receive three Hail Marys or an Our Father or a rosary or some sort of penance at the end is because it makes up and helps pay back that temporal effect that sin makes. For example, if you throw a rock through someone's window because you're angry and you don't like them, and then you think about it and you say, you know what? I did a wrong thing. I should not have done that. And so you go and apologize to the person and that person forgives you. That's great. The Protestant would walk away and say, thank you. The Catholic would say, you know what? I lost my temper. I need to work on that. I broke your window. I'm responsible for it. Let me pay that back. Let me give you the money to pay back that window. And I'm going to think about what I did, try to work on it, and do better next time. That's the confessional process. We don't just say we're sorry, but we try to make ourselves better and we try to do better next time. So many people have been healed for confession. They go in crying because they're scared to death and they come out crying because they're so free and they feel forgiven and they break down and they just can't believe that God forgave them for all of those sins. They feel free, they feel happy, joyful, overflowing with peace and forgiveness. That is what the sacrament of confession is about. Can we confess sins at other times? Absolutely. I mean, we confess our sins at least six or seven times during the Mass. Every Mass, we confess our venial sins. At the beginning of the Mass, we confess our sins right away. At later in the Mass, we say, Lamb of God, have mercy on us three times. We say it in the Our Father. We're always asking forgiveness for our sins. And in fact, I ask for forgiveness for my sins every night before I go to bed, just in case I don't wake up the next day, I'm covered. But mortal sins need to be confessed in confession. But it's great to confess all your sins in confession because you get them all out and God forgives you and you get something in confession that you do not receive anywhere else and that is a special grace. Special grace that fills your soul, brings you closer to God, unites you to Him, and helps you to have the strength not to do it again. But in this video, we're just showing that Jesus set up the sacrament of confession for a reason, to bring us back to God and to help us to know him, to experience his love and forgiveness, and to have the grace and strength not to do it again, and to make up for that temporal punishment that we do to other people. So that's why Jesus set up the sacrament of confession. It's a great thing. I go every month, and it's never easy. I don't like it, but who likes bringing up their dirt? Nobody. But it's like a car wash. You go in dirty, you come out clean. If you have a lot of sins, you go in really dirty, but you still come out just as clean. And in fact, God can clean anyone and everyone at any time from anything because of what his son Jesus did on the cross. So if you haven't been to confession lately, God's calling you. Go to confession. Go to your local church. Find a good priest and say, hey, Father, I haven't been to confession in a really long time. Maybe I don't even remember how. Can you help me? And maybe even write down a list of your sins, as many as you can think of in your phone or on paper. And then after you've received forgiveness from God, delete all those sins, throw those sins away, burn them. And that is just symbolic of your sins being forgiven by our good and glorious God. If you have any questions on this, if you have any questions about confession, please feel free to put a comment down below. Also check out our other videos on confession in our other folders. Please like and share this video. It helps it to become more popular and it helps other people to see it who might really need it. And please really consider supporting our ministry because we don't just do videos. We do confirmation retreats. We work with teens a lot and work with the future of our church. We do parish missions. We give free books away and have book drives. We do many things in order to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. So please consider supporting our ministry. Please pray for me and I will pray for you. You have a great day and God bless you.